Welcome back to another edition of Tea and Toys. This time we've got the Kingdom release of the Blaster and Eject toy. Now, we haven't seen a Boombox Blaster, I don't think, since the original toy. And then we've got an Action Master, which obviously didn't transform. And I think I think the next Blaster we got was the, the other War for Cybertron toy, when he was a bit more of a truck thing based on the Soundwave mold. So yeah, we haven't had many Blaster toys, official ones, at all. So this was a big breath of fresh air. This is one a lot of people wanted. I actually expected Blaster to be in the studio series. I did think they were going to put him in there like they did with Perceptor. They didn't have to, obviously. Uh, so they put him in Kingdom. And he's going to be in the Legacy toy line with no changes. Now, when they first showed that image of Legacy, and then some month later or so they showed him with kingdom packaging obviously we saw what blaster looked like in kingdom the image for the legacy promo it showed blaster it looked like he had a yellow hue to his face so i thought they were going to go for the um comic book colors version of blaster for the legacy release obviously i'm wrong now because they've shown us blaster in the legacy box which is why eject here is see-through clear plastic because that's like a gimmick for the legacy line where the, you can combine all the different uh, weapons and stuff and uh, you've probably got the tape holes here on eject where you can sort of slot bits and bobs in there from those other weapons so he will still be interactive with that gimmick in the legacy toy line well yes at long last a boombox version of blaster we can finally put on a generations classics shelf it's only taken Forever. I was impressed with this as it comes with this trusty rifle. Obviously, it's like a little sound wave finger hand, so you can sort of press his button, which doesn't really work that well because his arm's a bit too. So you can sort of go like that. And now, uh, I mean, and because of the way you do it, it, his own hand hinders it from coming open. But I guess you get the. You could just have him sort of get ready to press it like that, so you. in a display. Press it so we've got that image that you can show off. And do but yes, his own hand gets in the way of it actually opening when you want to try and do it. Unlike Soundwave, who can open it via his button with his open E finger. Now, some of the grumbles in regards to Blaster I've seen is he's noticeably taller than Soundwave. Now, that is one thing I personally hated about the original toy. He was just astronomically bigger than his foe now funny enough in the original series and the film they only actually face off once and they sort of have like a music face off now we're talking about sound wave let's get sound wave out and you can see blaster is quite noticeably a head taller and a bit than sound wave now funny enough the animation models actually depict Blaster slightly taller than Soundwave. But this doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. Um, Soundwave is still a double hard Decepticon. So Blaster being a little bit taller, it's not going to bother a character like Soundwave. You still fight him. But the best fight they did do was in the Japanese Headmaster series, where they actually had a full-on fight and they both die as a result of that battle. And then in that continuity, Soundwave is upgraded into Sound Blaster. And Blaster is upgraded into Twincast. And I kind of hope that they do a similar thing with Twincast as they've done with the more modern Sound Blaster, where they're two separate characters. I just I just prefer that personally. And that'll probably be another recolor of Blaster we'll get. And maybe the Diaclone Colors, which is also used as the Shattered Glass version again. I'm not interested in Shattered Glass. That's not something I'll be personally picking up. But there he is with Soundwave. Like I said, a little bit taller. Uh, it doesn't really bother me that much. He can still fight him. A little bit taller. Well, I think Soundwave is probably stronger anyway, so he's got that advantage. And what would be nice is if we can see the flight pack accessory come out in some form. Make you could make him one of the Condor molds, perhaps. Retcon him into being a Condor, like how they did Jackpot's sort of partner from the Action Master series, and like they did with Wing Thing here with Soundwave. It is something a little bit extra you could add to get that another cassette to go with Blaster. Speaking of the cassette, let's hang off Rumble here. 
got some over the back. So let's have a quick look at Eject now. You know Eject, first appearance was in the movie. So again here, get one that was justifiably could be in the Studio Series toy line. Let's try and transform this and not break it on camera. Yeah, quite a simple transformation as we'd expect. A lot more articulation on him than you get on the rumble actually. Let's give him elbows. So there he is, there is Eject. So we'd like to see his brother, which is the black version. He's obviously the blue version. They'll probably do down the line, they'll do a solid plastic version of this, and then we'll want to get that. But I'd like to, I still like to see Steel Jaw and Ramhorn. And if they do Sundor and some of other blasters extra cassettes, like I said with um, the flight pack, turn him into another Condor or flight mode type one. There we go. You can see he's a little bit bigger than Rumble as well. So you can have that fight that happens in the um, observation cannon tower in the movie. Let's just get Double Dealer down. And what I thought Eject was going to be, I thought they were going to use this mold, this head sculpt in particular, for the Eject. And you can see there are some similarities there. You've got the grill, and you've got like the three like, head prong type things here, which are clearly here on him. So I think that they sort of rejected just releasing these as Blaster's um, warrior cassettes. And they sort of opted to just rejig and redo the whole thing, which is actually, this is a better toy than this. Just, you can do, because you've got that more movement with the arms, it just kind of makes, oh, actually. Oh, you can move these up. So yeah, it is a better toy, all in all. It, it, this is not that great. But he suits enough if you want to display all your characters. So I'm surprised that he is quite a unique little piece, actually. I would um, knock the Autobot part of a Double Dealer there. So yeah, not bad. And like I said, I do think they're going to use the gimmick so you can sort of attach the other weapons on eject here and there you, go, you can slot the weapons in there so yeah he'll definitely be a part of the combining gimmick legacies other characters won't be good more so i never get to have the joint weapons so there we are never mind right well that's enough of blaster in robot mode and here we have blaster in the boom box mode here is if i to get the button pushing out eject there so here it is actually quite a good representation of what we see on screen so you know you've got the button there, you can open it up, in and out the cassettes. There's a good storage place for the weapon on the back, so you can have it all in one, all the figure together. What I'm hoping that they don't do is any shenanigans, if they do do twin cast and they give you rewind with him, don't do that, Hasbro. Give us the other three cassettes readily available to go with Blaster here. No shenanigans. If you're going to do twin cast, new character, or flip sides, or somebody like that, to go with him. Well, that's just what I have to say about that. But there he is. Looking quite cool. Not a mode I'm going to have him displayed in anytime soon. But there we have Blaster. Ready to play you out right now. Don't forget to love, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.